Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. A recent study came out that 95% of baby foods are contaminated with heavy metals. Obviously, this is a very big deal, even if it was just adults, but children in particular, um, metals are neurotoxins. Certainly, they're neurotoxins for all of us, but in developing brains, it's, it's extremely problematic. Can really affect IQ, the nervous system. We certainly have a lot more children on the uh, spectrum these days, and we, we know that environmental issues are at play. So uh, I want to kind of delve into this a little bit and let you know the variety of things that were found. I have some notes in front of me, so you'll see my eyes go down a little bit. Um, but the, the worst foods of the list, they were, uh, that, let's see, they looked at 61 brands, so they definitely did a nice cross section in 13 different types of food. Uh, the worst on the, these lists were apple and grape juice, oat rings, you know, like those little, little O's that kids pick up, uh, macaroni and cheese, and then there was also sort of puff snacks, you know, rice puffs and different things that are puffy and, and crunchy, and then in, in all rice-based foods. So we can start with the bottom and work our way up. I've done a number of blogs. You can visit uh, the website rootcausemedicalclinics.com, a number of blogs on rice. And rice, if it's organic or not, it, it really, it's not the rice the rice's fault, uh, but the plant unfortunately uh, very much pulls up arsenic from the soil. Certain parts of the United States are worse than others, and southern United States where they used to grow cotton. Uh, cotton is a, a plant that um, the pesticide they used on it was laden with arsenic, and so uh, it's deep, deep, deep in the soil, and again, rice just happens to be a plant that that, that extracts it from the soil um, more predominantly than, than others. So uh, rice-based, and you know, if, you, if you're a, a mom or a dad, I mean, everything's rice-based. When, when you first start uh, feeding your baby, um, you start mixing rice cereal with breast milk, you know, as the first little thicker, you know, food that you give to the baby, and then there's rice teething biscuits, and it's rice, 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 and so, um, We've known about this for a while, yet that, that change certainly hasn't occurred in, in baby food. So the arsenic was in about 75% of all the foods they tested, as was cadmium, and then lead was really high, that was 94%. Once again, these are all neurotoxins, these are all um, damaging to the nervous system and the brain, and then mercury came in lowest at 32%. Um, so when it comes to organic versus non, organic is always better, but unfortunately, if like you're looking at organic rice again, there's no difference. It's, it's just the plant. Uh, the fact that they're not spraying pesticides on the plant is very different than the plant extracting it from the soil. So no difference there, still organic the better way to go, generally speaking, but we need to move away from the rice. And at the end, I'm going to go over recommendations of things you can do, of course. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Uh, certainly things like formula, if it's at all, all, all possible to breastfeed, that is the very best thing to do because formulas tend to be very, very high in sugar, high in GMOs, and it's, it's almost impossible to find a decent formula. Um, and really problematic. There's, there's nothing better than what Mother Nature created uh, for we women, and that is um, truly the perfect food when your child is an infant, and that is breast milk. So anything and everything you can do, um, do it. It's, it's so worth it. Uh, unfortunately, in our society, I, I, we see a lot of pregnant women and babies here at the clinic, and uh, so often it, it's, it, it's so easy to say, well, you know, the baby looks like, you know, it's a little bit shy on the growth chart, and the weights are not quite perfect. You should supplement. Very quick to the supplementation. Truth of the matter is that our bodies are designed, we could, do, we could feed twins. So if you're getting enough rest and you're working on your health, you're hydrating, uh, definitely the hydration is key and the getting enough rest is key, um, but it is a supply and demand kind of thing. So even if you have 
you feel like there's no milk, just the fact that the baby is using you as a pacifier and sucking, 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 that will in a couple of days really raise your, your milk supply. Um, child's not gonna starve in 48 hours, believe me. And uh, that supply and demand is very, very key. So I just think too often, um, women are advised to, to supplement. And then of course, the more you supplement, the less milk you make and you, you get in, in the wrong direction versus the right direction. So I'm a big fan of breastfeeding if it's at all possible. All right, so back to the recommendations. Um, no fruit juice at all. Uh, it's water and then when the child can start chewing on little pieces of fruit, you want fresh fruit and of course organic. You just, you never want to do the juice. Way too high in sugar. Uh, I always tell patients, you're drinking the water, you're eating the fruit and organic again. And then instead of the rice, we want oats, barley, or quinoa. Now, uh, barley is a glutinous grain, so if for some reason you're gluten sensitive and you're worried about the, the baby or you know it runs in your family, you certainly don't have to do the barley. You can do quinoa and you can do uh, gluten-free oats. So these are oats that are guaranteed to be gluten-free, meaning no cross-contamination with, with other grains. And then um, a lot of variety. Uh, getting your child used to a lot of variety of food is, is really important so they, they get that nice palate. And one thing you want to think with is some of the more um, you know, bitter foods, you know, the green beans, not always just uh, carrot and sweet potato because unfortunately those root vegetables tend to pull those heavy metals again from the ground. So some more of the uh, vegetables that grow above ground and of course the fruits is so much, so much better. So a little bit of carrot and sweet potato. Uh, I know I was completely guilty of um, the organic Earth's Best, you know, in the little a glass jar, no plastic, but boy, my first child, I think that's all I ate was, was rice cereal and, and carrots and sweet potatoes, you know. We just didn't know any better. It was just all about the organic and, and the glass jar and, and organic rice cereal. So we learn, we, we learn, we learn, and uh, that's what I like to share. So with the vegetables and the fruit, a lot of variety. Don't make it all about the root vegetables, the carrots and the sweet potato. Uh, certainly no plastic. It's, it's best if you can make your own. Certainly you can have on a Sunday or a Saturday where you get some really nice organic vegetables. You steam them. You can uh, let them cool naturally or, or put them in glass and, and let them and then cool them in the refrigerator. And then when they're really, really cold, you can put them in some Ziploc um, baggies or if you want to puree them and and put them in some little glass jars, you can do that. But especially, I mean, it's it's what they do in the fields, you know, with the with the frozen vegetables is they're flash frozen on the spot. So you buy them, steam them, and then freeze them, and then you can take them out and let them defrost in the fridge and puree them and do what you will with them. But certainly that sort of batch cooking for the week, uh, very, very easy for babies. So um, you try that. Um, tofu. I know a lot of people are scared about soy. If you want to hear more about that, it has to be organic. So there's no GMO. That's very key. Uh, but soy is, is not a dangerous food unless you feel like your child is reacting to it in any way. And then another really nice thing for like a, a grain, but it's really beans, is that there are a lot of pasta companies now that are using um, garbanzo beans and lentils to make pasta. Banza, B-A-N-Z-A -A is a nice company, but if you go to like a Whole Foods or a Sprouts, you'll see a, a variety and you can try them. But those turn into some nice finger foods actually. You know, you cook them and cool them and they're, they're pretty chewy and they're 100% either lentil or garbanzo or sometimes a combination. So a really nice high protein snack and uh, you know, tastes just like pasta, but you don't have to worry about the wheat, you don't have to worry about the refined aspect of the grain, and uh, very high in protein and, and very tasty. So, and recommend that for you as well. That's the only pasta we use now in the house. So uh, really concerning about, about um, this contamination of literally 95% of, of all baby foods. So, if you know any, anyone with a baby, uh, please let them know about this. It's, it's something 
that that awareness has to be shared with suggestions not like well it's 95 percent and they tested every brand and what am I going to do not feed my kids you know you can see sort of the extreme reaction and I get that which is why I wanted to make some um, you know considerations about alternatives you know there are things you can do of course and it doesn't have to be terribly difficult certainly less convenient than the little plastic pouch that you know that you give the baby with applesauce but you know a little extra time can mean everything to your baby's uh, neurological development their IQ and and their happy healthy life which uh, we all want for for everyone so I hope that was helpful if you're in a situation where your health is not the way you want it to be if you feel like your child is struggling at all please reach out that's why we're here and you can give me a call 408 733-0400. I'll talk to you soon.